Now let's talk about some exceptions to Gregor Mendel's observations. Some patterns of genetic inheritance are not explained by Gregor Mendel's laws. These inconsistencies do not mean that Mendel's conclusions were wrong. It's just that not all cases are as simple as the traits that Mendel looked at. For example, some genes have more than two possible alleles. Now keep in mind, each individual will only have two alleles, but what if there are more than two options? Well, then individuals can have different combinations of alleles. And sometimes alleles do not show complete dominance. Complete dominance is when the heterozygote looks just like the parent showing the dominant phenotype. Let's look at some exceptions to dominance. Now, for some organisms, their traits display what is called incomplete dominance. And it may also just be certain traits in an organism. In incomplete dominance, the F1 hybrids, the heterozygotes, they have an appearance in between. that of the phenotypes of the two parents. An example here are snapdragons. You can have true breeding red snapdragons and true breeding white snapdragons, but when you cross them together, their offspring are always pink. Now what's interesting about the pink snapdragons is that they can never be true breeding. You only get pink snapdragons by having one red allele and one white allele. And so, if you were to breed two red snapdragons together, a quarter of the offspring would be red, one half of the offspring would be pink, and a quarter of the offspring would be white. So let's say you're a landscaper or a florist, and you really want to have pink snapdragons. Well, you should be starting with a red and a white snapdragon. That way, all of the offspring will be pink. If you start with two pink snapdragons, only half of the offspring will be pink. There's also a human trait which shows incomplete dominance, and that is hypercholesteremia, or elevated blood cholesterol levels. Now, some elevated blood cholesterol levels can happen by reasons of diet, but there could also be a genetic component leading to high cholesterol levels, and one of them has to do with the presence of cholesterol receptors on the liver cells. The normal allele for this particular gene forms a cholesterol receptor on the liver cell, allowing this liver cell to bring in and process that cholesterol. Now, if an individual has two mutated copies of this allele, they won't have any cholesterol receptors on their liver cells, and their blood cholesterol level will be especially high. Now, what about the heterozygote? Well, if an individual is heterozygous for this cholesterol receptor, they produce half the regular number of cholesterol cells they produce half the regular number of cholesterol receptors, but not as many as an individual who is homozygous for the normal allele. So these individuals will have a mild form of this disease. In this way, hypercholesteremia is a human trait that is incompletely dominant. What about genes in which there are more than two possible allele options? An example of this would be the I gene, which controls the ABO blood typing of human blood cells. The ABO blood groups in humans are the result of multiple alleles. Of a single gene. In this case, for the I gene, there are three alleles, capital IA, is the allele that codes for the A-type sugar on the red blood cells. Capital IB is the allele that results in the B-type sugar showing up on the red blood cells. And the little I allele is recessive to both, and it codes for no sugar on the red blood cells. Since there are three different allele options, and each individual will have two alleles, 
one from each parent, we see there are a few different combinations. Another thing to notice about this particular gene is that while the capital I alleles are completely dominant over the little i allele, capital IA and capital IB are co-dominant with each other. So let's look at this. If an individual has two copies of the capital IA allele, or are heterozygous with capital IA and little i, they will only make the A-type sugar on their red blood cells, and they will be blood type A. Same is true for capital IB. If an individual is homozygous for capital IB, or heterozygous for capital IB and little i, they will be blood type B and make the B-type sugars. If an individual is heterozygous with capital IA and capital IB, they will make both types of sugars, and so these two alleles are considered to be co-dominant. The little i allele, coding for no sugar, is recessive to both, and so if an individual has two copies of the little i allele, they will be blood type O and not have either of those two sugars on their red blood cells. Now another interesting thing to see is that even though little i is recessive to capital IA and capital IB, blood type O is actually the most common blood type in the United States. Just because an allele is dominant doesn't mean that it's going to be more common than the recessive allele. So as we saw, two of the human blood type alleles exhibit codominance. meaning both alleles are expressed in the phenotype. Now this is different than incomplete dominance, where the phenotypes of the homozygotes are blended in the heterozygote. So to compare incomplete dominance, codominance, and complete dominance, Let's look at the phenotype of the heterozygote if we have a true breeding white parent and a true breeding black parent. So this could be something like, let's say mice who have black fur and white fur. Well, if it's incomplete dominance that we're dealing with, all of the offspring will be gray, a blending together of the two parental types. If it's codominance that we're dealing with, then all of the offspring will have black and white patches or black and white spots on their fur because both black and white fur will be present. Whereas complete dominance, if we're dealing with black and white fur, the heterozygote will either be black or white. Depending on which is dominant. Often we think of darker colors or darker pigmentations as being dominant to recessive. And I would say while that's generally the case, it won't always be the case. Another complication that Gregor Mendel did not see in his observations are when a single trait or characteristic is controlled by more than one gene. We call this polygenic inheritance. And this is the additive effects of two or more genes on a single characteristic. An example of this in humans is the default level of skin pigmentation. This is not just controlled by a single gene, and it doesn't just follow complete dominance. Instead, we're dealing with three different genes, each of which are operating in an incompletely dominant manner. So for each of these, there's a more pigmented allele and a less pigmented allele. And so when we look at the possible combinations or ranges of skin color, there aren't just one or two options we're looking at a gradient, a range of possible options. Another trait that shows polygenic inheritance in humans is height. The height that an individual is genetically predisposed to is controlled by multiple separate genes. Another aspect that Gregor Mendel did not consider or did not observe is the role that environment plays on determining an organism's phenotype. Many human characteristics come from a combination of heredity and environment. Here we see a picture of two identical twin girls. 
These two girls happen to have the exact same genetic sequence, but looking at them, they have slightly different phenotypes. One of them possibly spends more time out in the sun, and so has slightly darker skin color and slightly lighter hair color. Now, if we were to take it to a more extreme example, let's say one of these two girls bleached her hair and then dyed it blue. Her blue hair would be a very different phenotype from her sister, yet that wouldn't be caused by genetics. That would entirely be dependent on the environment. Internal and external conditions can influence phenotype. Now Siamese cats, the reason why they have their coloration pattern is that the darker portions of the cat are actually at lower temperatures than the more lightly pigmented regions. Siamese cats actually have a mutation in the enzyme that produces melanin, or this brown pigment, and it doesn't operate at normal body temperatures, it only operates at lower temperatures. And that's why the extremities, like the legs and the tail and the ears and the face, these are more darkly pigmented because the temperature is cooler in these regions. And so putting this all together, alleles are passed from parents to offspring. Some traits are controlled by a single gene, whereas other traits will be controlled by multiple genes. Environment. can influence the way genes are expressed. And so, ultimately, the phenotype of an organism, while it's mostly based on that organism's genotype, it can also be influenced by the actions of separate genes and also environmental influences as well. Well, now that we've gone from genotype to phenotype, let's spend a little bit of time talking about the relationship between genes and DNA, and then also look at some human characteristics. See you in the next video.